All right, so I'm in the middle of my new and improved image gallery tutorials. My goal here is to focus on adding some style. And we're going to apply some standard CSS. We're going to apply some CSS version 3. So places where you can learn more, and I highly recommend you bookmark these. So number one, you can go to w3schools.com, and we have Learn CSS 3. In fact, if you look here, they're already employing some of CSS3 on this. You can see a little shadow around the box. I'm going to show you how you can create that shadow effect. The other thing is if you look here closely, you'll realize those are rounded corners. I'll show you how you can make rounded corners as well. Okay, it's under Learn CSS3, so you can teach it. You can even animate items, as you can see on here. And you can stretch them and do all kinds of interesting things, which I don't recommend you always do just because you can. And so we're going to focus. There's things we can do on CSS3 related to borders. Um, and so that's where a lot of what we are going to do comes from. So we have border radius, box shadow, border image. These are the ones I'm going to be doing a demonstration on. So that's what we're going to work on. So let's go ahead and open up the image gallery where we are right now. And let me just remind you, we have our tags, each image is inside of a figure and each image is also wrapped with a hyperlink that takes us to the full-sized image and then we have a fig caption inside and by the way the fig caption I believe is a block level tag and so there's things we can do the caption too as well so we're gonna style this up and add some more features here a couple of things you probably want to do is add a background color and so on your background color, you can decide, do you want to make it a pure color? Do you want to make it semi-transparent? You choose, but my recommendation is you come up with some kind of a color palette that you're going to use, where you have the uh, similar colors uh, coming from a variety of, um, I mean, just doing a variety of colors that go with it. Okay, on our background color, I'm just going to stick with the hexadecimal. And in fact, if you look at my travel brochure, or not, not, not my travel brochure, my image gallery, you'll notice they're all black and white. So I might play off of this black and white here and create a background image that is almost white, but not exactly. Okay. If it were all white, it would be FFF. So we're going to try something like EEE. -E -E. And we're just going to save that as our background color for the figure. Go back to our page, hit refresh, and we can see that we're having some background uh, color. The other thing you're going to see is that um, our captions kind of line right up next to that background color, and I would like that to have a little more space around it. So we're going to add some padding to it as well. And let's just add padding evenly around. And so let's just try a 10 pixel padding and just see what that looks like. And so it pushes everything out. And so we have our background color now. We have our caption. It looks pretty good. Uh, still, we've got a lot of gaps in between our images. And if you want to pull that in, the first thing you want to do is you want to figure out, like, what is being used right now? Is it, is it a margin or is it a padding? So I'm going to click on this, and I want to click on the figure itself. And if you look at the figure, and you click here, anything that's orange is actually a margin that's going around it. Okay. So we have a pretty large margin. So let's scale the margin back a little bit. And um, we actually probably don't even need a left hand margin if we don't want. So let's remove, let's start by just putting a margin of um, 10 pixels instead. And that will be all the way around it. And you see how it pulls them all together? So at this point, you can actually do four rows if you want. But I'm thinking if you have a margin of 10 and a padding of 10, it ends up being um, equidistant, and it's a little bit more pleasing because it's consistent. So let's go back and just take a look at that one more time. In fact, I'm going to move this over to the side. Okay. And notice what happens when I go too small. You can't even fit all three images, and that's where your layout starts breaking down. I will show you on a later tutorial how we can address that based on getting the width of our browser and, depending on it, changing how they lay out. Okay. So for now, we're just going to look at these two. Notice our padding here. Notice the margin. It's twice as thick 
because um, we set the margin at 10, but we have the right-hand margin of one figure and the left-hand margin of the other, and so they're kind of getting in the way. Um, it may be the caption, too, so we're going to test out one more thing. And now there's no margin inside the caption, so that's good. One thing I will point out, though, when I, I hover on here, notice it says fig caption display block. So it proves to you that the uh, fig caption is a block level tag. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and style it. I would like you to add some styles to it as well. So we could put like um, font style italic. And now we've italicized the caption. If you don't like that size, you can change the size, you can change the color, you can do whatever you want to do with that. For now, I'm just going to leave it like it is. So what I want to do is start doing a little bit more fancy code with this. And so we're going to show you a couple things with CSS3. All right, guys, what we want to do now is box shadow. We're going to do a little shadow here. It's box shadow. Okay, now in box shadow, a couple things. We need to know if we're going to add a shadow. Is it going to be to the right? Is it going to be to the left? Is it going to be up? Is it going to be down? How big is it going to be? And how fuzzy will it be? And what color will it be? So there's a lot of information we can put on there. So the first thing we do is what's called the horizontal offset. So if we want to make our box shadow, actually, if we put margins at 10, Let's try a box shadow of five pixels and then five pixels. The first one is for the horizontal offset. Is it to the right? Is it to the left? The next one is the vertical offset. Is it above? Is it down? The next one is what's called um, the, um, I think we give it one more value, is how fuzzy is it? So we're going to try three pixels, and the last thing is going to be the color. And we're going to try almost black, so I'm going to try a, um, a 10, 10, 10. And so just try a box shadow like this. Um, this one, it has to do with the feathering of it. So let's just take a look and see what it looks like on our travel brochure. Or I keep saying that, sorry, on our image gallery. Let's take a look at the, the box shadow there. Okay, Notice, the first one is horizontal offset. I gave it positive 10. That moved it to the right by 10. I gave it a positive 10. That moved it down by 10. And five pixel, or three pixels is the blur. So watch this. Let's put a negative five, five, three pixels. Hit refresh. And see what I mean? The horizontal offset. If you give it a negative value, it goes to the left. You give it positive, it goes to the right. Okay. Let's play around with the vertical, and we'll give it a negative 5. Save our changes. Hit refresh. And now it goes up above. Okay. So that's the box shadow. And, of course, one of the problems with box shadow, guys, is that when we add a shadow to our boxes, it gives it a 3D look like it's coming off the page. But the problem is my text is a flat look because there is no shadow. Fortunately, there is such a thing as text shadow. So let me just show you that while we're at it. And it looks the same, only instead of box shadow, it's text shadow. And we're going to do the same one. In fact, I like the 5 pixel, 5 pixel. Now, I'm going to make it more blurry. I'm going to give it a, an 8 pixel, and we'll use the same color. And I'm going to change these values here to match my box shadow. And I'm going to save my changes. We go back, we hit refresh. Now, everything has a box shadow. Everything looks like it's coming off the page, and at least we're consistent. Now, I'm not saying you have to put a shadow on there, but I want you to know how to if you would like. And when you do, consider whether you need to add it also to your text as well. And notice how that kind of pops when we highlight it. Okay. 
So that's one thing we can do, box shadow. And so the other thing we can do is we can change the color. So that seemed a little dark. So what if I try, um, a, a, oops. We try all eights and see what that does. And there we create a, a little less. It doesn't stand out quite so much. So again, so I'm going to leave that up here.